Hello, welcome to Traffic TV. It is my three things, Everton won, Sheffield United nil at Goodison Park in the Premier League. Everton sign off their Premier League campaign at Goodison, their penultimate campaign at Goodison Park uh, with a victory, making it five straight victories for the Toffees at home. Good way to finish the season without conceding a goal at Goodison Park as well there uh, in those five victories. And this, let's be honest, this time next season will probably all be very tearful um, having played Evans final game at Goodison Park um, but today was a, a it was a win I don't think we played particularly well there was patches there was moments where we knocked the ball around nicely and there was moments where we a lot of the deficiencies showed uh, still um, and that's one thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with really <clears throat> is the need for some creativity or some real pace in this side because without the intensity a lot of other flaws are showing up in this team and there is I've said all season and sometimes I've, I've took a bit of stick for it but these players were better than they were showing and I think they proved that in the last kind of four weeks that, that they were much better than they were showing during that other period um, I think the manager and the, the coaching staff have got a way of playing I think we need to, for that to move on or for that to be successful again next season, and we need some real pace in the team or someone with a creative eye, someone that can do something a little bit different. It's going to be difficult. This summer we know the, the director of football has already kind of started to set the tone for that, saying it'll be a challenging summer. It's not... I, not sure that messaging is great, if I'm being honest, because it tells people who want your players that you are a little bit desperate. Um, I know that, listen, a lot of people might say, well, people know we are anyway, but there is still there is still ways that you try to protect your position. But he's done it, so it's out there. So we are going to be, we're going to have to be creative. There is a lot of footballers in the world. There's a lot of players who can improve Everton Football Club that aren't available for huge or sorry that are available but not for huge fees uh ones that are bring pace in ones that are playing in other countries never are gonna have to utilize that utilize the loan markets as kevin farwell said and that will probably come through player sales as well but we need we need that pace too often and it was it was evident today uh the times that james garner got the ball on the right that he would slow the game down and pass it back dwight mcneil does it regularly slows the game down because he hasn't got the pace to get away from people and that's fine but when you've got that on both sides it, you haven't got an outlet you haven't got an outball and i think as well as that i think there's a there's not an issue but there's there's certainly a conversation to have about Abdelai Decore as well off the centre forward he scored the winner today could miss could he let's be honest but he was in there Seven goals for the season for him. But it is his first since December. But that position requires um, different skill sets as well. I think too often, even today, I, I don't think the Corey had a very good game today, to be honest with you. He's had much better games than that. And I think sometimes he's actually better from deeper. So I think in that position, off a striker, if we are playing 4-4-1-1, You'd want someone in there who's got a bit of pace about them or has got that creative spark. I actually think, I think probably Dwight McNeil at times could do that role because he, he, he does strike a good ball. Now, would he do the other bits? I don't know, possibly. Could he, would he, he could play midfield as well. But I think if we need to get an injection of pace either down the right or the left because it means when you break, if you've got someone who is quick, it takes you up the pitch so quickly. I think it's evident when we play other teams, you've got that, how much more threatening they are. And I think this side has got a lot of positives in it, but it is let down because it's so one-paced. We don't have flying fullbacks. You know, our fullbacks were, what were they, 73? Today, Seamus and Ashley Young both had decent games, but you can see, I mean, Seamus does try to continue to do, he's trying to get in all the time. But he can't do that every week, can he? And, and obviously Ben Godfrey's more of a defensive fullback. Nathan Patterson, the, the manager, right now doesn't doesn't seem to be sold on him fully. I'm not saying he doesn't like him or he can't develop him. Just right now, he's not like he's commanding that position. 
Um, so we're definitely going to have to look. Jack Harrison, you know, the manager's come out today and said he won't be back for Arsenal. It doesn't seem so. That could well be the last. You know, he might not appear in an Everton shirt again. So we've lost that off the right. Um, so we do need that injection of pace and also a creative spark because it, when it is like today and it does drop a little bit and we're just doing the same thing, we haven't got enough forward thinking midfield players that will take the ball on into the penalty area or someone who's got that little bit of magic about them. So that's what we've got to look it's difficult. It's difficult because obviously a lot of clubs are looking for that kind of thing as well. But there are players out there that, that could help us because we haven't got any. It's not like we've got a certain level of it and we're looking to get Champions League level players. We're not. But we're looking to get some kind of um, extra ingredient we can put in that side that works in tandem with, with the structure that this manager likes. And if you do that, then the team could evolve again. Uh, so that's the challenge for him and the recruiting team this summer. It'll be difficult, but they get well paid in that job. So... They earn the money now, but um, that's what I think we need for next season. Uh, just moving from there into those four positions, second point is Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who has finished the season really well. He was outstanding in the Merseyside derby, got himself a goal as well, of course. And today I thought he was brilliant. I gave him man of the match, created the goal with a great run, good composure to go round a goalkeeper and then pick out Abdelai the Corre for the goal. And... He has finished the season really strongly. He's completed the season, which is brilliant. You know, he's, he's been fifth for most of the season. I think, you know, he's finished Everton's top goal scorer, or the core equaled it today. Um, you know, if he has equaled it, him and the core have got a little bit of a scrap next week at Arsenal to see who can who can get the goal and take them to be the, the top scorer for the season. But I think Dom... Has done really well. The issue with Dominic Calvert Lewin is he's only got a year left on his contract or 13 months, and Everton have got a decision to make it. There was talk of a new contract uh, a while ago. He hasn't signed it as yet. Does he want to stay at Everton Football Club? Has he got other. The, the, apparently, Joe Thomas was reporting today that he's got interest from other clubs. So, does he want to. Does he fancy something different now? You know, he's been at Everton for, what, 10 years now? Or coming up to 10 years? Has he? Well, i just adding years to his life. Eight years, sorry. Eight years he's been 2016, wasn't he? Uh, so he's been at Everton for eight years. Does he want to move on? I don't know. Um, but if he, he really has shown lately that he's, he's still, you know, an excellent centre-forward for Everton. And... And Everton, where they are right now, could we really get better than Dominic Calvert-Lewin? I'm not saying can't, could we, if we had a ton of money, of course, you can always get better. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with him, because obviously there is that thing of, if you won't sign, what, you're going to have to make that decision anyway, aren't we? But it'd be a pity if he didn't stay, because I think you get in the right service and add to it, then I think he's still a handful for most defences and, he seems to enjoy being at number nine, but we'll wait and see. And then finally, all of those things only roll forward if we get the takeover sorted. And that is obviously huge at the moment. There's so many stories going around. So many stories are inaccurate, really. Um, I think my understanding of it right now, and say, speaking to people today, is that there's no finality for anything that Farad Mashiri is doing. Triple Seven is still in the fight to get the club. Farad Mashiri is looking at other options as well, which is what he's, he, he needs to bring this thing to a swift um, resolution, whichever way that is. If that's getting rid of Triple Seven, then do it. Don't hint you're going to do it, but keep talking to them and stay in there and... Um, if there's other people who genuinely want it, I know apparently George Downing was at the match today, but he is he is an Evertonian as well, George. So you know, I'm, I'm surprised me if AJ Bell was there as well, who is an Evertonian, but I know obviously they're involved or seem to be involved with MSP as well, who have got an eye on proceedings. What are going on? There's there's talk that there's other people interested, but Farad Mashiri is the only person who can bring this to a to an end. Really, we can we can. 
as supporters, we can complain or we can um, will things to happen. And I think what we've shown in the last week is that the FAB have done really well with their statement. The, the uh, Everton shareholders put a good statement out the other day trying to, you know, call on Farad Mashiri to, to really, you know, bring this to a resolution. I think a a deadline that nobody knows and a what seems a flexible deadline isn't helpful to anybody. This football club needs clarity. We need to move forward. We need to do the planning I've just been speaking about before in terms of recruitment. Who's going out the door? What's, what kind of team is the manager going to be left with? How can he shape that team? He needs players in. Really, if we're to lose... Just say, you know, worst case scenario, we lost Onana and Branthwaite and they're gone. Well, they're two lads who have started a lot of games. Both are in the team today. So the manager, therefore, then has to bring players in and try to integrate them. What are they like? Are they good enough? Who can we get if they go? How quickly do those players go? How quickly can Everton do business? Well, none of this can really happen unless we've got the clarity at the top of the football club. We've not had that clarity all season, it's truth be known. This was going on a year ago. Don't forget, MSP looked like they were in the box seat a year ago and people were talking about um, this possibly being tied up in time for the transfer window with MSP being in charge. If you think, if you take your minds back the year before, there was the Kaminsky takeover, wasn't it? They are going to take over there, buying the club and they've got these plans to put this money into it and, and all that. Well, here we are, kind of two years later, and we're still at this stage. It's triple seven this time. It's them. Is it them taking over? Or isn't it them? Well, who is it then? Is it MSP? Is there someone else there? The stories of Kevin Malone and the LA, the, who was in the LA Dodge, involved in the LA Dodges in the past with his, him with a consortium. But, but these, a lot of this stuff is just hearsay or it's just people wishful thinking, Qatari investments and all that. Until that all plays out, real as in it's in front of us and we've got real um, examples of it, then it's all hearsay and, and I'm just now, I just want a resolution one way or the other and, and I want that finality and there's only Farad Mashiri that can bring the finality, so that's where we're up to. Anyway, there you go. They're my three talking points for today. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Have a fantastic weekend. See you later.